I'm Quinn Marie with Red Carpet Report. We are here on the set of the Disney show Live and Maddie talking to Kali Rocha. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, how about you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for inviting us to the set. It is my pleasure. I so, love sharing it. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about your beginnings. You started out in theater. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I went to Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. Acting School um, in Pittsburgh and then I went straight away to New York and I was there for about eight years doing primarily theater. No TV and then some films. So how did you transition into television and movies? Um, I came out to LA with uh, When Meet the Parents came out, mm -hmm. which was one of my first bigger films. Awesome. And uh, it was a great entryway into LA because, you know, it was a successful film, a lot of mm -hmm. people saw it. And then from there I did more films and then suddenly realized like the dirty little secret is LA is TV. Yes. So um, <laughs> then I got really into TV and that became sort of my bread and butter throughout my time and I've been here now 14 years. So That's crazy. It's been great. Do you plan on ever doing theater again, or is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, I have two small children, so schedule is tricky, because with theater you're away all day, mm -hmm. rehearsing, and then you perform at night. Sure. So it's not realistic now, um, but if opportunities came up, absolutely, I would take them when they got a bit older. That's cool. Yeah. So you're mostly, I mean, you've been in a million things, drama and comedy, but you're mostly seen as like a comedic actress. Uh, is there one that you prefer more? Um, I think certainly the seat I'm sitting in lately and, and feel comfortable in is comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if a really amazing role came along that was dramatic, I would do it. But there does seem to be something that happens when you become a mom. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm, I don't speak for everybody, but um, I don't want to think about my child being abducted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't want to think about having cancer and leave my children. Like, totally. I just start to not want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't, I'm not drawn to those kinds of roles, particularly because mm -hmm. um, maybe it's too close to the bone or something, but I really like laughing and making people laugh and it feels good. That's cool. Um, is this your first, your first role in a children's television show? Yeah, actually it is. Um, yeah, I can't think that I've done anything else that would qualify. Okay. Yeah. Were you apprehensive a little bit about the material, uh, you know, being just solely for kids when you first read the script? Well, I didn't know that you'd become a rock star for kids between 3 and 12. Oh, yeah. um, and that's a lovely perk. Yes, um, huge. But huge <laughs> and so pervasive. Um, but I, sure, I had misgivings at first, I think, because I sort of thought like, oh wait, the dream was to be like a modern family, you know. Mm -hmm. But the script just kept proving itself to be quality and mm -hmm. frankly, network level. And so then you sort of go like, everything's changing anyway. Like mm -hmm. half the people are on web series and then Holly Hunter and Glenn Close are doing TV. So mm -hmm. it's just shifted so much since I've moved out here. Totally. And um, so it, it made, it was a no brainer in that sense, which is like, A, I have a family. Um, my husband's also in the business, he's a sound mixer, and together you kind of just take any job you need to, um, within reason, mm -hmm. to make your family go. Totally. And it was such a good job, then it was like, well that's great, so then let's yeah. do this. And then as I talked about it, it just kept proving itself dimensionally as being a better and better job. Mm -hmm. And it must be nice being able to bring your kids to set or being able to show them what you do a little bit more. Oh, completely. Yeah, they think I'm a rock star and they also, but they get it also that it's just mommy. Mm -hmm. um, How old are your kids? Three and a half and six. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. they, the six-year-old, I'm sure, can grasp what's happening yeah, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, my daughter grasps it profoundly. I don't oh. know how she gets it, but she, like, anyway, she has a terrible crush on Tenzing. Um, and so she loves to talk about Tenzing. And then nice. there's some, some mystery on the stages of the Hollywood Center Studios that this man, Edward Gray, who was an electrician in 1945, like, fell to his death, whatever. She's obsessed. Oh, my obsessed God. With the story. She's drawn pictures of Edward Gray. She, like, That's crazy. She's yeah. obsessed. So wow. she, she gets things. And so she, she really is into this job. And mm -hmm. she understands all that I do. And that I'm always mommy, but that I play Karen and pretend. She loves to come into my dressing room and just, she always checks out my jewelry. Nice. That's her main, that's her, main, cool. her main thing. What would you do if your kids wanted to get into show business? Would you be supportive or? I would definitely be supportive if I felt that it would try to make them happy mm -hmm. um, and that they were pursuing it for the right reasons mm -hmm. and that they got good training. I just okay. think that's important. Mm -hmm. So um, if they did it because somebody told them that they were cute in the ice cream store, no. Okay. Um, and I, a couple people have asked me if I would ever get my kids into commercials mm -hmm. or anything like that. I feel, I guess, that even at 42, it's sometimes difficult to separate like the true from the false mm -hmm. in terms of external praise and all that stuff. So yeah. um, I think it's a sort of a dangerous thing uh, for me to um, bring children into that unless mm -hmm. they're like profoundly level-headed like Tendon Trainer, like yeah. who's born a Buddha and nothing can ruffle him. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would dissuade them from doing it. Oh, you would? Okay. Um, f until they were, you know, also um, well-versed in other areas, I think. I wouldn't want them to solely pursue mm -hmm. musical theater or something without traveling the world and learning about other people. And, nice. Yeah, studying history. Yeah, that's cool. 
So um, you wrote an episode. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us what that was like? Uh, just balancing mm -hmm. being on the show and writing, and mm -hmm. then also can you tell us a little bit about the episode itself? Yeah. Um, it's called Neighbors of Rooney. Okay. Um, I wrote it with my writing partner, Jonathan McLean. Mm -hmm. We wrote one last year also called BFF of Rooney, okay. <laughs> uh, which was so fun. And that was such a, it's just an amazing training ground here. And uh, it's like a master class in collaborative sitcom writing, that mm -hmm. writer's room. So um, John Beck and Ron Hart are the EPs, um, two of the EPs, and they're just amazingly humble about it allowing a guest writer to come in yeah. and be part of their world. Mm -hmm. So it was seamless in that regret respect. Um, balancing things is a bit trickier. I assume, yeah. What's nice is that my family sort of understood it was just this crazy week mm -hmm. where I would be here acting mm -hmm. in rehearsal, costume fitting, and then kind of here late <laughs> until mm -hmm. eight and maybe wouldn't see them. Um, and then you just make your weekends count, you know, and yeah. try not to be, even if you're tired, you just push through it. Yeah. Um, and then the episode um, is delightful. <laughs> um, I don't think I can go too much, but I can say, as the title suggests, that it was very important to me that we explore the neighbors of mm -hmm. the Rooneys, um, sort of to see who they are. And we learn that they're sort of basically like the worst possible combination for Karen's issues. Oh, no. <laughs> so she's completely intimidated by them. And they seem to have all the right granite countertops, quartz countertops, and like whatever. <laughs> so very funny competition happening there. Okay. Um, we do learn a little bit about a possible love interest for Liv. And um, also Maddie and Parker go exploring on uh, an expedition. That we'll see where that goes. Very cool. And, uh, but it, it's really a delight. Maddie and Liv, I mean, uh, my character Karen and Liv and this one, mm -hmm. um, kind of have an ill-advised hijinks that they get into that goes terribly wrong. Oh, okay. <coughs> well, thank, that's actually more than I thought you were going to be able to yeah. tell us, so that's awesome. <laughs> Probably get fired. <laughs> thank you. No, okay. Okay. Uh, do you think that you'll write more in the future? I certainly hope so. Okay. Um, on this show, as for as long as it goes, I would love to do one episode a year if that's possible. Awesome. They'll have yeah. me, because it really was a positive experience. In terms of writing in the future, future, mm -hmm. absolutely. I really, really enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. I like the balance, though. I don't think I'd want to like run a show yeah. or something. Um, and I'm perfectly fine just selling ideas and, you know, building up in my house. Totally. Um, but I also, uh, right now, have a web series in development uh, with my writing partner, at Universal, uh, and it's through Universal. So, you know, we're, we're putting tethers mm -hmm. out there, but I have to always balance it with my life. Yeah. And I, I, I just can't set about writing a sitcom and then try to do this and yeah. then do that, you know. So yeah. right now it's really nice. Cool. And then you have another project coming out that you wrote a while yeah. back. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Um, it's a collaborative process that I wrote with five other writer actors, um, which began as improv mm -hmm. about 14 years ago. Okay. We did it as a play mm -hmm. around LA, actually at the HBO Workspace and then Comedy Central. It's called Space Station 76, and then we sold it to Comedy Central as a pilot. Um, and then we kind of all went off on our separate ways, but Jack Plotnick, um, who had directed it and whose idea it was, basically shepherded that, that material into a screenplay, and lo and behold, Sony domestic and international purchased it, and we will be released this year in theaters. That's so, awesome. made it into a film, and um, I have a role in it, not the role that I originally um, did. Um, we cast Liv Tyler in that role, oh, cool. and Matt Bomer's in it, and Patrick Wilson. Oh, and wow, awesome. Yeah, it's a star studded cast, and cool. it's excellent. I've seen it, and it's excellent. Cool. Can you give us just a little baby brief synopsis of that? Yeah, the tagline is in space, no one can hear you be passive aggressive. Nice. So that says a lot. And <laughs> when um, my friend Jack came to us, he said, I want to do a play that's the ice storm in space. Mm -hmm. And we were all like, done, got it, let's do it. <laughs> because it's just basically six people. Um, there's a few other characters, but who are stuck in a spaceship together. Mm -hmm. They never say what they really feel. There's so much passive aggression going on, and they're making a transition, but transition from the 60s to the 70s. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, it's somewhat political in that way, which is that um, my character as written was uh, kind of the new woman coming mm -hmm. on as an assistant captain, mm -hmm. and the captain couldn't deal with it. You okay. know, he's like, you're a woman, I'm, are you wearing a bra? Like, you yeah. know, just, he just couldn't, you know, couldn't process that. So, okay. um, so it's kind of a dark comedy? Dark it? comedy, okay. that's perfectly put. Yeah. Cool, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. So are you able to show us a little bit of, uh, around the set? Yeah, come on, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. <laughs> now this is um, Karen's lair, the kitchen. All right. It might be covered up a bit because um, between shootings, we covered up to clean okay. it. 
still cool. Oh, still cool. Still cool. Still here. Yay! Yeah, this is the Just kitchen. like on TV. I think the refrigerator is even stocked. Let's see what the heck. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my gosh. Some. If you want some gnocchi, so you nice. Some life. Of that. Isn't that crazy? So Most much of it detail. is. I know. The so detail crazy. on this set is phenomenal. Yes, I mean, this is amazing. Phenomenal. So, um, oh, cool. This is our little kitchen area. Where it all goes down. Nothing upstairs, but uh, my kids love to run up there. I'm like, there's nothing. It's fake. It's fake. <laughs> this we never use. It's a dining room, just for show. Just for show. Mo like most bedrooms, actually. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And this is the main. This is the main. This is what we're all used to seeing on TV. Exactly. This where is the famous red couch that we always sit on. Um, it's the see. couch. It's the couch. Whoa. And we love it. Um, and so cool. yeah, it's really the details. Maybe. They did ask us early on to send in pictures of like ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little skittish because I was like, I don't want to send pictures of my kids. Yeah. But then everybody else. This is like Dove, and what they did for Dove is they replicated her picture in the picture. Yeah. So she's twins. That's so. It's cool. so funny. So it's that kind of detail. It's just exactly. amazing. It's just amazing. Like, Totally. This has been amazing. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Well, I know. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. This is so great. Thank you thank so much you. for talking with us. My pleasure. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for talking with us. Be sure to like if you guys like this video and also subscribe for more interviews. And be sure to check out the second season of Living Maddie, September 21st. Mm -hmm. <laughs>